Hey y'all, this is Stuart, KB1HQS, and in this video I'm going to talk about my first aid trauma kit. So this kit is actually like uh, number three, I think. I've gone through several different iterations. Uh, the first couple were really, really big, kind of cumbersome. I ended up not taking them. Um, you know, obviously this lives at home. I live in a major urban area, so if I'm calling 911, I'm going to get help really fast. But, uh, you know, on the road, some of the remote areas that we go to, not so much. So it's nice to have my own kit. And, uh, you know, as far as training, I always say, you know, carry the equipment that you are trained to use with. I know a lot of people tend to collect a lot of stuff that, frankly, they don't have the training to use. You know, I'm not going to carry decompression needles. I'm not going to carry antibiotics, any of that crap. It's just, it's not, it's just not really useful. Uh, I'm not trained in it. And I'm not going to give some random stranger, you know, a, a decompression needle to jam into my chest because I think I might have a tension pneumothorax. So that's not happening. As a result, everything I have in here is pretty much just basic stuff. And at the end of the day, fundamentals is what counts. So again, your kit may differ depending on what your background may be. My background, as far as, uh, you know, medical training, uh, EMT basic, uh, wilderness first aid, wilderness first responder through Knowles uh, National Outdoor Leadership School and uh, several tactical medicine classes that I've taken uh, through Dark Angel. If you're looking to take that kind of uh, training, I recommend them, they do a really good job. And uh, some dive medical training classes as well. So uh, that's pretty much what my background is. And as far as the equipment that I'm using, um, I have a list, uh, a link actually, a PDF uh, spreadsheet that'll be listed down below. So you can follow along as we go through everything. So the first thing we need to talk about is the difference between first aid equipment and trauma gear because they're completely two different things and a lot of people tend to get them mixed up. Uh, putting first aid equipment in, you know, with your trauma gear. When you need something for trauma, you want to have a trauma gear only. You don't need band-aids because you cut your arm off with a chainsaw. It's just not going to work. So my equipment is separated. As you can see, I've got my trauma equipment in this pouch, which has, you know, quick tear away for easy access. And then everything else, basically my first aid equipment is in this blue bag. So we're gonna talk about this last. To begin with, with the, uh, the medical kit. Now you'll notice this is by Adventure Medical Kits and my uh, personal first aid kit in my backpack that I use for backpacking is also from Adventure Medical Kits. And they do a really good job. Uh, their equipment, I think, you know, it's, it's high quality gear. Uh, they are a little pricey, but you get what you pay for. There's a lot of cheap stuff out there on Amazon and eBay that frankly I wouldn't trust my life to. So what I did is to begin with is I put a, uh, a headlamp attached to the outside because if it's dark you want to be hands-free um, i personally don't really care for these headlamps they really suck i have several of them and what ends up happening is if you hit them against something they actually open up and the batteries go flying so i need to change this out at some point but i already had it so i just threw it on there and it's just you know loop through the handle for for quick access the other thing i did is i added these labels so rx course is uh you know my medicine over the counter stuff um, tools and uh, and then of course trauma I sewed on there as well so kind of helps break it down having an idea what's in, in each different compartment one thing I like to mention about adventure medical kits which makes them so awesome is that they list on their website under each piece of equipment that they sell and in, in this case this particular uh, medical pack which I'll list down below they'll list out all the items that are in this bag so you can use that to build your own kit if you want, if you don't want something that's commercially made. Uh, one of the things I like um, about having a commercial kit is, at the end of the day, I think it's probably cheaper. Um, it saves me a lot of hassle of having to track down a lot of different stuff. I already had a bunch of stuff from another kit, so I just kind of removed some items I didn't like and added some um, that, that worked for me. Um, the other thing is we have a health savings account, like a lot of people, which basically gives you a tax advantage and saves you some money. And at the end of the year, without fail, I always have like between, I don't know, 20 to like a couple hundred dollars that's left over that we have to burn off before the next year. So that's a perfect opportunity to add um, because you can buy a lot of this equipment, a lot of the items in these kits you can buy online and use that account to pay for it. So it saves you some money in the long run as well. All right, so let's look, let's look at the first compartment, which is uh, tools and which is appropriately labeled right there. Uh, one thing they do um, do that comes from the bag itself or comes from the manufacturer rather, 
is it they've labeled these items inside the kit and they don't always um they don't always correspond to what i actually put in there but for the most part they do so it works out i should mention i did add these little um pull tabs on each of these zippers so all you have to do is just grab it and you can just pull them really quick and they open up so that's something i added because i you know a lot of times if you're wearing you know if your hands are cold or covered in blood it's just easier to, to pull them open all right so in the uh, tool compartment uh, the first thing I have is a pulse oximeter, which I just got actually for COVID purposes. Um, as we all know, if you're losing uh, O2 saturation, um, this is a good way to be able to tell. I also got this because I thought it'd be kind of cool to try out on summits, uh, you know, as we go up to nine, 10,000 feet, just to see, you know, if there was any uh, in de decrease. I thought that'd be kind of interesting. I um, also have a, a standard, I'm not going to pull it out, but I have, you know, a standard stethoscope and uh, blood pressure cuff. Pretty standard stuff, and I think that's it as far. Oh, I also have a Sam Splint um, inside here as well, just a standard stamp, uh, Sam Splint. It was the one place I could cram it in here. I was kind of running out of space. One thing I should mention, I did add pull tabs to a lot of these compartments on the outside and the inside, because it just makes it easier to open everything up really quickly versus trying to grab a hold of, you know, one of these little metal tabs. So it's kind of a nice addition. I think I got it on Amazon. So as far as equipment, as far as equipment, I've got a uh, irrigation syringe, no needle. Um, this is just good for, you know, if you have a cut and you need to get any debris out of the cut, that's what that's for. You could also use it, I guess, to flush out your uh, your, uh, your water filter if you want. So there's a bunch of stuff that's crammed in here and I'm just gonna kinda try to go through it. Uh, digital thermometer, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I also have several scalpels. This actually came with the kit. Uh, these are obviously if you need to, you know, cut stuff out, there you go. Uh, skin stapler, again, I'm, I don't do any suture stuff, but this is probably the one minor exception. But this is um, pretty simple to use, especially if you got any like scalp lacerations. Otherwise, I'm going to leave stuff open. But as we all know, head wounds tend to bleed a lot. Um, checking for um, pupil size, a little pupil light for that. Uh, syringe, or syringe. Let's try that again. Tweezers, and this is actually from a dental kit that I have that's part of this entire setup. Again, for dental and uh, forceps, which are really handy. Super glue, again, for any minor lacerations. And because we are up in Maine right now, a tick key comes in really handy. And a specimen cup, though, honestly, I don't. You know, if you had some small, like a tick or something and you needed to have it checked out, that's what that's for, I guess. But I probably will take that at some point. Uh, some more tweezers in here and uh, safety pins. And then uh, Dr. Bronner soap. So this is something I added. Uh, sometimes you just need some basic soap. So Dr. Bronner's is my definitely go-to soap for that. Over in this section, I've added a, a 3D printed, uh, like a writing pad, if you will. And I just dummy corded a, the uh, pencil that came with it uh, it's on a little elastic and then I have my uh, soap notes for you know notes for in the field so if I have to make a notes on a patient there you go Knowles has a, a little cheat sheet uh, which I've used in the past it's a uh, pretty self-explanatory pretty easy to use it really comes in handy and then this book actually comes with this kit uh, with this medical kit and uh, you know it's just a wilderness medicine book and then I also have my own personal, uh, again, it's a, like a field guide, wilderness medical um, guidebook from, from, actually this is from WMA, not Knowles, but Wilderness Medical Associates, who is another, I believe they're still out of Maine, um, is another company that does wilderness medicine training. And then this is my actual list. So I've got a laminated list front and back of all the items. Probably should just leave it right here. Make life easier. And of course a Sharpie, because you can't have a medical kit without a Sharpie. So that's the tools uh, for you. It's, you know, it's nothing overly exotic. Uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward. And yeah, you know, the book stuff, I have this basically in, in an app form uh, or via Kindle, I should say. So if I need to look something up, I can also use my phone uh, via app. All right, so in this compartment, there's actually two different sections. There's a section that's trauma related. And again, everything trauma is pretty much in here that I need. This is more of like spares that I couldn't fit in here. Um, you know, it's just extra stuff, extra tape, and I'll go over all that in a sec. 
In this compartment is the uh, medications and then personal protection as well as some other miscellaneous stuff. So to begin with, I've got a dental kit, again, made by Adventure Medical Kits, which is pretty handy. I don't like dental emergencies and I really don't like the dentist, but uh, if I need it, there you go. As far as medication stuff, again, everything is over the counter. You know, Aleve, uh, ibuprofen. And what I did is I put all of the stuff into Ziplocs because what I found when it was all loose or if it was in one of these compartments, that it was just impossible to try to figure out where anything was. And then what I did is I put, you know, each one, each section. So like, for example, aspirin has its own little compartment. And so if I need medication, I pull out the medication bag and then I just dig out what I need um, within that kit. So it seems a little OCD as far as organization, but it actually works out a lot better. Before when they were just loose in there, it was a total nightmare. All right, I also have some electrolyte type stuff uh, because if you are low on electrolytes, it's good stuff to have. This is all like cleaning stuff. So I guess you could, in some ways, maybe the soap should go in here. I don't know. Right now though, it's, you know, dude wipes as well as, you know, alcohol pads and that kind of thing. This is kind of my personal like um, foot care stash because foot care could definitely be a, a medical issue. Uh, I've got my little syringe, broken off syringe used to pop blisters. Uh, I've got zinc, um, sunblock, as well as glide for any kind of chafing issues. Because if you're doing a lot of hiking, you can have chafing or feet issues. Uh, hand warmers for the uh, winter time. And then this is all uh, iodine solution that came actually with this kit. So I just put them in the, the old bag. Now, personal protection gear. Of course, we're all pretty familiar with what this is these days. And uh, same with this, it's just some standard Perel. And then uh, gloves, lots and lots of gloves. You can never have too many. I also have some in the uh, trauma kit as well. And last but not least is uh, more kind of like, this is like your standard Band-Aids, uh, PT tape for, um, you know, blisters or if you want to tape joints or things like that so nothing nothing some steri strips probably use this more than anything out of all this equipment so that's pretty much everything for personal protection medications and basic first aid gear like band-aids okay so for the as far as the trauma side for spares basically i've got you know the standard wraps i've got tape uh, medical tape as well as some duct tape i also have you know sling material got some of the um, emergency trauma dressings again just some more spares and you know gauze that's pretty much it so that's pretty much the whole kit as far as just the spare trauma equipment so as you can tell I mean it seems like a lot of stuff but it really isn't it's it's really pretty much the basics that you would need in a first aid kit all right so last but not least is the trauma kit and again I put velcro on this and just um, sewed it on so I can attach it to the side and just pull it off for quick access. Of course, you want personal protective equipment on the outside, AKA gloves. I did have black and I changed them to blue uh, based on a suggestion of someone I believe was on Twitter. So uh, good call because you can actually, actually see blood on blue when you can't on black or it's really difficult. Just, I still happen to have black gloves and that's what I was using at the time, but I switched it over. So this is the trauma kit. Uh, again, I added the uh, trauma tag on the, uh, the handle itself. And if you open it up, all right, so let's take a look at the inside of this kit. And originally what I did is I had everything just kind of on the inside. And when I opened it, stuff just went everywhere and it just wasn't very doable. So I fired up the 3D printer and I made a, maybe mounts for each one. And what I did is I just added uh, the bungee here that would holds everything in place, but you can still get stuff out. So it worked actually really well. I was actually pretty happy with how it came out. I'll include these files down below for anybody that wants to add them as well as the name of this bag. So to begin with, I've got uh, scissors on the outside right here, uh, gauze, emergency blanket, and then I just have uh, two tourniquets. Uh, I'm starting to go to orange. I like orange better. It's more high vis. It's easy to see, but uh, you know these are the latest cat tourniquets. I get pretty much almost everything I would say from North American Rescue these days. I just like them. I've used them for a long time. Uh, they ship fast. They have good deals on their equipment. Don't buy your tourniquets or your medical gear on uh, eBay or Amazon. You know, there's a lot of fakes, especially when it comes to the tactical stuff, especially with tourniquets. Uh, it's, I'm not willing to save five or 10 bucks 
and be wrong if I actually, if I need a tourniquet, I'm going to need it. And I don't want to find out that it was a Chinese clone and that the windlass broke when someone was trying to crank it down or I'm trying to crank it down. So just be aware that there's a lot of fakes. Buy them from, you know, well-known manufacturers. I'll include some other links for other, I think there's like two or three others that are, are um, worthy. So, and then on the other side here, I've got the, um, I got the uh, hemostatic gauze. The, um, I used to have powders, but these days it seems to be all impregnated gauze. Plus, it's easier to get them wedged in here. Uh, and then also just have some standard medical uh, or uh, trauma pads, rather. Again, more of the same. MPA for, you know, right up the nose, which is always fun. Some duct tape for the actual chest seals. So two chest seals, and then I also included some tape with easy pulls um, if you needed to uh, tape them on, if the adhesive on these doesn't hold up. Though they're pretty, these days they're pretty strong. And these do have expiration dates on this stuff, but I don't, I still feel confident and it's, you know, if it's a year or two out of date, I'm not too worried about it. Um, but the duct tape for the sides, if it doesn't adhere well because of blood or other foreign matter. So, and here, and again, you can see, you can see the actual mounts. And what I did is there actually, there's some Velcro on this bag right here. And so I just put Velcro on the backside and it just kind of holds them right in place. It's nothing super fancy, but it works. And again, this stuff all kind of holds together anyhow when the back's closed. So as you can see, there's nothing really super fancy or, or overly crazy about it. It's pretty standard gear for, for trauma gear. So that's my trauma kit. Um, yeah, so put any comments down below what you think, any additions, subtractions. Uh, again, this is what works for me. I'm not saying that this necessarily is what you need as far as the entire kit. But um, yeah, I just thought I would share it and uh, maybe it'll help somebody out. So thanks for watching and 7-3. Uh,